How do HTTP servers figure out content length? Let's talk about this with this blog post, which I just figured out the other day. Anyone who has implemented a simple HTTP server can tell you it's really simple to create a protocol, like really simple protocol, HTTP. It's a text protocol, text file that has some specific rules to make parsing easier. So if you know, like if you have sent a fetch request or if you have done anything work, any sort of work in JavaScript, you might not have known that this is how raw HTTP works, right? So you can use a tool like Netcat, for example, and send a raw raw HTTP request to some website where you have to specify the method in this case like it's get it could be post put patch then the path then the version then a few headers host being one of the most important headers because it tells you like on what domain the request is arriving right the first line is the request line and it has a request method path HTTP version the following lines are headers each terminated with the carriage return and a line feed so this these two characters this is carriage return this is line feed right there is also an extra CRLF at the end to mark the end of the header section. So after this, the body section starts if there is any body in that request. So here is a simple Go program to demonstrate this using raw TCP socket for the client. So what's happening here is that you start an HTTP server and you have written a function that handles this specific request header, right? So on get test, if slash test is requested, you just write hello world as raw bytes and that's it. When I tried this, I got the following response. So you can see an interesting thing about this is the content length header, there is one extra header which is dynamic but it's automatically injected right which basically every other library also can do if you're using it in node.js express all of that is able to do that so that's the exact length of hello world in utf8 in the above go code writing this response happens in two parts the first we write hello and then we write world notice how we didn't need to call any function to write the headers but they are still in the response in go's http package a status of 200 and the headers are automatically written if w.write is called before w.write header so you know that in http as a protocol, you always have to write headers before you start writing body, right? And if you have written the body already, for example, in this specific case, this person is writing the body directly instead of writing headers. That means that automatically the Go internally would consider the response to be 200 OK, status code of 200, and it will write the appropriate headers. But this raises a question, right? Remember that in HTTP, the headers are always written before the body. Like I said, how is it then possible that before writing hello to the connection, the server always already knows how long the response will be, right? Because you see over here, for example, you just write this hello here and then wait for some time and then you start writing world here, right? So what's gonna happen over here is that if this is running in a streaming fashion, like if the response is getting streamed to the client, you already would have gotten the headers of the response, right? Then you are getting the body, but the header itself contains the content length. So this is what the blog post is about, that how this logic works. So what if I wanted to write one hello and then a thousand exclamation marks after that or a million. Does the server need to know how long every response is before sending it? It would mean that every response need to be kept in memory for the entire duration of the handler. I wanted to figure this out and didn't have to look too deep. I found this amazing comment in the standard library of Go itself. Basically, it says that if the response is small enough to fit in one chunking buffer, then the length can be calculated very easily and sent all at once. If the response, however, is bigger than the buffer, it is sent in chunks. What does this mean in practice? So let's see the same example which he told that he'll write hello first and then 3000 exclamation marks after that, right? So you start the server, you get the connection inside Go and you write the HTTP request and then you print the response. So the handler now returns hello and with 3000 exclamation marks. This is bigger than the configured chunk size so we can see what happens. So the response comes out to be something like this where HTTP 1.1, the response status headers, codes, all of that but there is no content length header, right? Instead of that, there is a new header known as transfer encoding chunked. Our message is being chunked, sent in multiple paths so that the server doesn't need to fit the whole thing into memory at once. Clever. The first line of the response data is now a number, 800. Why 800? As it turns out, the number is actually a hexadecimal number, which is 0x800, like proper way to represent that. It's 204 in base 10. Similarly, this second number, this 3bd is also hexadecimal, is 957 in base 10. And summing this up is the full length of the message. So sending the length of the message before the actual message is a common method to efficiently transfer unknown lens. Chunk transfer encoding was added in HTTP 1.1. This means that it is very old and basically all HTTP servers and client supported. So you know like for a fact that you know HTTP 1.1 is like very mature protocol. Sending chunked responses also allows something known as trailers which are the headers that are sent after the body. In Go, trailers need to be explicitly declared before sending them. Okay, so this is useful for things like digital signatures which need to be computed from the response body. In Go's HTTP handlers, adding trailers will automatically 
make the response chunked even if normally it wouldn't be. So HTTP servers have this concept known as trailers. So you see that trailer response header allows the sender to include additional fields at the end of chunked messages in order to supply metadata that might be dynamically generated while the message body is sent, such as a message integrity check, digital signature, or post-processing status. I mean, you can sure, you can just hold the whole message before you send it and compute. Let's say if you want to send SHA 256 of a message as an integrity check. So one way is that you compute the whole message and you, you know, just create that SHA 256 first, attach it to the header and send it directly or you can just stream the message and create the SHA 256 on the fly as well some sort of it could be SHA it could be any sort of integrity algorithm but that doesn't need a full file inside memory right so that is where these trailing headers are interesting because you have to specify them first but once you do that you can add this header after you have written the response also if you do this in a usual setting your library or whatever you're using will give you an error 100% times that you know you have already sent response headers and you cannot send response headers after you have sent the body. HTTP 2 and 3 does not support chunk transfer encoding as they have their own streaming mechanisms. So that is one thing. This is one of the many things that happen in the background when using the net slash HTTP package in Go. HTTP response writer is a remarkably simple interface having just three methods on it. Behind this API is a lot of magic including content type sniffing and a lot of things. So I mean the blog post is short but it includes like a lot of interesting things which you might learn in a new thing the trailer headers for example and how the transfer encoding chunked and content length works and this is also like one one of the ways you can start to stream data right so if you just to give you an example for example if i go to codedam.com slash ai and start an ai request right so if i say something like hello world tell me about javascript hello not world hello ai for example right clear this off go to fetch request send this request so you see over here inside of the stream you can see that okay so for some reason chrome is not showing the transfer encoding chunk method but there is no way you can determine the content length from this specific response right so in that specific case you cannot have content length declared as a hard-coded header when the response is streaming out right so yeah that's pretty much it for this video hope you learned something new if you did make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel that's all for this one i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon